punch the sky, Spaceman Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Which is back. <laughs> that we're not going to talk about this week on the Paranormal News. Everyone, we're jumping into it. Paranormal ah! News. Ah! From your werewolf radar. The news your... is me. Friendly neighborhood werewolf radar. Fire up the radar. Pour in some blood. Pull the d- starting chain. Lock the <laughs> gates. It's werewolf radar. This week was a little bit slow on paranormal news, but I did. Well, it was, wasn't it Labor Day weekend? No, it was Labor was, Day weekend. Yeah, yeah, Interestingly so enough, not a lot of people took saw. The day off. They took yeah. the day off. And it was, that was two weeks ago. Since Labor Day, just not a lot of oh, ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Not not a lot of huge stuff. There's a signal, and I'm Roger, by the way, joined by Nate and Jordan, as always. Sup, uh, skunk fuckers. That was uh, uh, <laughs> Jordan two filling in for Jordan. He says skunk fuckers a lot. We like it. Yeah. We're thinking oh, about yeah. swapping them out. I'm starting to say sup, skunk fuckers, whenever I enter a room, and it has not yielded the professional results I had hoped for. So for this week... Anyway, where are my sides? (laughs) For this week, and if you like what we do, please give us a five-star review wherever you can. It really helps others find the podcast. Just do it. Just do uh, it. We eat stars too, by the way. So, like, you know how you don't eat stars? Uh, Give us those so Jordan can eat. I need to eat stars. Me, I have, to, I have to eat hummus and pita until I run out of hummus and pita. Mm-hmm. I have so much hummus and pita. Such is his curse. Mine is, is to curse. be a devourer of stars. And Nate's curse is, unfortunately, to kill the person who killed his master. And he's going to mm-hmm. get to it. Yep. Little does he know. As soon as I finish swallowing all these candles. It it was his master. That's what we find out in season three was that your master killed himself. And so now you're like, oh, what do I do? Do I have to raise a zombie of the master and kill him? Am I free of my oath? Let's find out. In season three of Nate Balding's Curse. (laughs) This week, though. There Terrible have been Nickelodeon game show. <laughs> <laughs> this week on the paranormal news, we have strange radio signals three billion light years away. All that right. scientists are saying could be, come from aliens. Oh, scientists! You always say that. It's because it's true. This is a probability, and let's go into the story. This is written by Grammy Murray. Okay, that's a name for a person G- to have. G R A E M E. I'm gonna oh, say Graham. Graham. Yeah. Disgusting. This is written by Grammy Murray. Grammy Murray, <laughs> the oldest, cutest reporter on the beat. <laughs> so, and from uh, mirror.co.uk, strange radio signals detected from space from a distance of 3 billion light years away could be alien scientists have claimed. The mysterious emissions known as fast radio burst, just a millisecond, just a millisecond long, but each pulsing frequency has as much energy as the sun emits over a hundred years. Okay. Two, two jokes. Two jokes. First of all, me hitting oh, joke, joke hitting the floor. Let me t- <laughs> let me tell you something about mysterious emissions. Second of all, uh, farb is that what it's called? F R B S farbs, farbs, farbs. <laughs> Scientists have suggested that the signals could be generated by extraterrestrials. They have speculated they are messages or a way to power spacecraft. They've made these claims a number of times. The most recent ones have actually turned out to be new types of quasar emissions, I think. Mm -hmm. So this could be aliens. This could also just be something new we've never seen before, which is just as exciting. But yeah. I think we're all hoping that it's aliens powering their spacecraft or like well, what we would do who's to say that quasars aren't uh, some sort of sentient being that uh, we can't comprehend. I like that. Nate's a fan of the space whale theory. 
huge alien beings out there. Quasars could be one of them. I'm a true proponent of a space whale. I don't I don't know if we'll ever see it, but I think they're out there. And they sing songs as well. Space songs. Yeah, like uh like my name is Jonas. I'm living in a whale. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just uh it's all just bare naked ladies. Ants bam. That's <laughs> echoes across the universe. It's so it's a potent of doom. We got another furb. Ants bam. <laughs> or this could be uh, like what we send out to control various craft on Mars or unmanned sure, space. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like those are also these forms of transmissions. Yeah. Okay. Other okay, theories so have suggested that they come from an exploding black hole. I didn't okay. know black holes could explode. Yeah, who would? What fucking bummer in the science class came up with that one? Check that one off of Roger, or check that one, or put that onto the list of things I fear now: exploding black holes. Oh yeah, jeez. Well, is an exploding black hole going to be better or worse than the black hole that sucks you into? It just, just kind of evens yeah. out to a nice spot. Did you did you hear that uh, uh, they found like black holes belching out material? Uh, Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That means that like things that go into black holes aren't as lost forever as we thought. No, but it means the black holes are eating our light. Yeah. And then blarching it out somewhere else. Even maybe maybe they are the tunnels we want them to be. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the fast world, radio the burst space for, nine. real quick, <laughs> real fast, quick. Yes. If you had a black hole. Yes. Like, like in what, my hand. Would, yeah, like a like a like a personal black hole from Samsung. There's yes. like one one end you can place wherever, the other end you can place wherever else. Where would you put it? Uh probably um the 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 girl's locker room like in porkies <laughs> i was gonna say very porkies of you um, interesting because i'm gonna put mine as a direct line to the police sex crimes division <laughs> so i can report that immediately i'm going to let you do your cops and robbers thing and i'm putting mine directly into a gamestop stock room oh wow okay and you're just oh, gonna... i guess i'm a robber in this case i'll yeah, join yeah, you absolutely. in this cops and robbers <laughs> yeah, yeah. no i i'm i'm gonna put mine this is so so much tamer you guys have all these grand ideas mine is going one next to the bed one mm-hmm. over the toilet nice <laughs> so i don't have to get up one stop clever <laughs> clever all right all right, 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 all right. The fast burst uh, signal that we're talking about has been dubbed FRB 21190520B. And it is the bees. second to have been detected for the second time and had 113 bursts prom- yeah. pr- prompting it to be studied by an international team. So these are happening all over the place, but until they become like truly unique in some way that we haven't seen before they're not studied so this one like is very unusual this one was worth it yeah it was worth it understanding drastic changes in the mag in the magnetized environment around the i think i skipped a sentence i did my bad the magnetic fields magnetic fields were also detected by scientists in China, US, the US and Australia which surrounded the FRBs and are thought to be a turbulent magnetized screen Dang. of plasma. Whoa. So these bursts are riding a wave, baby. Dang. Or maybe this plasma screen's riding the burst wave. Dang. I don't know how space hippies and surfers are doing it yet. <laughs> Who's riding who? They have suggested the likely scenario for the cause includes a signal passing through the halo of a companion, whether it is a black hole or a huge or a huge star with strong solar winds. Okay. It's a pretty big, pretty big weather. <laughs> that, that weather or <laughs> not's carrying a lot of weight. <laughs> when you get to unknown astrophysics, I think it is always like so. The black hole, so. 
it either yeah. destroys all information yeah or it doesn't right <laughs> <laughs> and this we're is not either, sure yet <laughs> this is either a radio burst from a star or god's voice we don't know we're, we're yeah, gonna find I mean, out but though. that's that's pretty standard for human civilization right like <clears throat> how many years go between the first worshiping of the sun and this, uh, uncovering a photon sure sure and Fair. then and then when we get mad at the sun and we're like we're not talking to you anymore and then we <laughs> make up with it so understanding the drastic changes in the magnetized environment around the FRB is an important step forward to understand the origin of such cosmic explosions. So understanding this environment that it's shooting through could possibly point us in that direction, though, of what this is. So right now we are on a wide spectrum of what this could be. We have black holes, uh, aliens. And then there's even interference that we have to go through. But if we can just understand, you know, one piece at a time, we're going to get to this. And hopefully it's aliens. If not, like I said, it's going to be something new to add to yeah. our understanding of the universe. Some new bullshit. God, what, <laughs> what fresh horror. The study that was published in the journal Science. Ooh, it's a good journal. To do Thank good you. work. I don't publish it, but I'll take credit <laughs> for them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they found very high variability in the FRB and detected a change in the radio's waves polar polarization in the in the radio waves polarization, which help which happens when it passes through magnetic fields. The changes in variability suggest a highly turbulent magnetic environment. Okay. Crazy. Writing for space.com, scientist Anna Thomas said, using the observed properties, we modeled these variations as due to a wind of a massive companion star. And this conclusion was strengthened by a system in the Milky Way that shows striking similarity to our FRB. I think. I like to think that in when there's a furb alert, it's just. <laughs> it's just a fart Barely sound that echo echoes through the place. <laughs> was that a verb or was that you, Jake? <laughs> Abogaino los dos, right, bro? I'm going to catch a star away. So please correct me if I misunderstand, but I do believe what they're saying is, though, is that this is coming from a star system with a companion star that is pretty huge. Okay, sure, which sure, could sure. put it into what we're studying through Hubble and other telescopes, these have a lot of planets in various Goldilocks ranges. Right. Right. Which is what's exciting. Gramey of the <laughs> mirror.co.uk. I've discovered something new. <laughs> Ziggy Planus. Right. And I'm Grammy pronouncing gets that. the story one worthers at a time. <laughs> Ziggy Plunis? P L E U N I S. I think that's Ziggy Plunis, classic Plunis. alien name. <laughs> of the University of Toronto said at the time, uh, said at the time, believe that the repetitions are not by chance. He said that we can now accurately calculate the probability that two or more bursts coming from similar locations are not just a coincidence. University hmm. of Toronto's into this. Some Ziggy. Of, some, Ziggy. Ziggy, who is definitely a human. Human reporter, Ziggy Plunis. <laughs> some of the fast radio bursts were never repeated and also the difference in characteristics, for instance, in frequencies, has also led astronomers to question if they have varied origins. So based on how often and predictable they are, they're now being categorized into, you know, this is, like we said earlier, quasar based on this. Right. This is something we don't know. Right? Yeah. And the random stuff is more potentially an alien burst of some kind. Because yeah. of the heartbreak we've all felt as the, as a alien watching community as of late. We're studying mm -hmm. and learning so much about the universe. 
And every time we think we're close, they just rip it away and saying, no, this is just something even cooler in a certain way. You know, Man, our, our universe is wide and wondrous. I'm firmly in the aliens are assholes camp these days. <laughs> I think if they find them, they better watch their asses. <laughs> But that's the paranormal news for this week, gentlemen. We have strange Birds. radio signals three billion light years away, so far from us. But it could be aliens controlling something in the far past or mm-hmm. maybe even controlling it now using advanced uh, radio burst technology. A whole, mm-hmm. a whole alien civilization built on radio bursts. Yeah. Tons of soundscapes, TV on the radio everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) They have the real Cookie Mountain. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, Please, once again, give us a five star review wherever you can. It really helps us out. You can follow us on Instagram and X, and then you got to do the X when you do it. X. X. You throw your arms above your head and you go X. We're gonna take but X for us, okay? We're taking it away for, from uh, Musk. Holy for shit! Japan, not did for you, the. Did you hear that? Did you hear that X? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the Xler. What are we calling him? Elon. <laughs> did you hear that? That Elon uh, had a new kid. Yeah, new, and it's new name Elon's is kid just dropped. His name is. Hey, Cobb. Hey. His name is Techno Mechanicus. <laughs> so all bow down to our new you know overlord. If thing is, Techno if, a, per, if a person gave their themselves that name, I would respect the hell out of it. <laughs> but if Elon Musk does it, it just sucks. He just yeah, he made that yeah. name shitty. Yeah, yeah. Let let us know. We also have a YouTube, and you know what the YouTube's perfect for? Telling us what you think of Elon's third kid with Grimes name <laughs> also, on the comments. Also, Do you like the name Techno Mechanicus? Was right there. Techno Mechanicus. He's like a Mechanicus. He's like a fucking. He's like the a King Midas of dog turds. Like would, everything that he touches turns to dog shit. Would you make fun can, of his name? Can only or touch would dog you, shit. And turn or would it you accept it? Shit. And write <laughs> like techno a love poem. <laughs> you know, for your first Valentine's. Yeah. And it has to start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if you really like what we do, uh, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Werewolf Radar, where you can become a Dark Council member, Patreon member, and get awesome Patreon exclusives, such as exclusive content, fiction every once in a while, merch, and suggestions, and... We have a tweet storm coming very soon. We're figuring yeah, out baby. when to do it and how to do it exactly. But we have a, oh. a, a dark lord who just jumped on board and they say we're doing great. Keep up the good work. Oh, boy, this is going to be a good one. This one's going to be mean. It's I don't want to tell everyone who it is, but it's going to be fun. No spoilers. It should all be pretty. Mean. Yes. A tweet storm when when the people on the on the Patreon choose it for their for their Patreon level. A tweet storm is when we tweet at least 20 tweets to a politician or public figure of your choosing about a paranormal entity of your choosing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, they should mostly all be mean, but every once in a while it'll be like, you know, John Fetterman needs to know about Bigfoot. And that would just be like kind. And we, that would be heartwarming oh yeah. kind. Because he might respond is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> he does seem like a big Bigfoot community guy. Yeah. All right, everyone. Let's wrap up this episode with our ultra super duper seeker sign off line by one Dylan Gutierrez, Dark Council member extraordinaire. One, two, three. Suspect, Suspect the moon. moon. No, the, the, the space person. Whoever. Whoever. Suspect Lord. the void. Oh, space Roger. Oh, one of your teeth fell out. Uh, well, you know what? Brush, everyone. 